All right, praise the Lord. Turn with me in your Bible to Mark chapter 5. This is going to be part 2 of a message entitled, Don't Be Afraid, Only Believe. Amen. Don't Be Afraid, Only Believe. Amen. As I shared last week, this came to me when we were in Branson on vacation. It was when I got, I finally got to uh, meet up with the hematologist because I've been fighting blood, uh, blood level issues the whole year, actually. And I know that's the reason I got hit as hard as I did with the effects of COVID. Recovered through all that, but still fighting the effects of that. So I finally got to see a hematologist. So they're going to draw new blood again, but some other things I want to look for and some other things. Uh, they should give me the answers. If they don't, we're going to need a bone marrow uh, biopsy. biopsy. Well, a week later or whenever, got the other results back, and he called when we were in Branson. said didn't get any answers. Next step is we got to do the bone marrow biopsy. Well, again, I'm one that always research and looks stuff up. Well, the majority of things coming from your bone marrow, if it's affecting your blood levels, they're not good. But again, you know, a faith preacher, I just don't preach it, I live it. Well, anyway, I just went to bed that night, woke up the next morning. As soon as I opened my eyes, I had this phrase in my spirit, don't be afraid, just believe. Amen. Well, that lets me know as a warning not to be afraid of the news I just got or something that may come in the future. That's right. I was hoping all last week I'd get the results. Well, I still don't have them. Finally, Thursday, they called the, the whatever they're called, that does the test and said they're still one. They're waiting on the results, and they want them all so they can come back with, quote, their diagnosis. So still waiting. For me, it's the unknown. So I want to know because then I can put the name to that name. Amen. 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 So anyway, that's how this message came about. Well, I don't believe it's just for me. As I shared last week, there's a whole lot of the unrest in the world politically, racially, the COVID, and just all that's going on in this world. It's real easy, even for those in the body of Christ, to get into fear and get out of faith. Well, the word of the Lord to all of us, church, regardless of what you're facing now or may face in the future, is don't be afraid, only believe. And I knew right where that phrase came from, and I knew it was scripture. And this is out of Mark. The Gospel of Mark chapter 5. I'm not going to read them all again. But in verses 21 to 24, a man came to Jesus asking him to heal his daughter that was very sick. Well, in verse 35, I'll read these few verses. Again in Mark 5. It says, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Amen. And he went in and he raised her from the dead. Now we all know not everybody gets raised from the dead. Hallelujah. But that's the worst thing that any of us can go through. Now if you're born again and saved, be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. So for that person, it's not bad. It's bad for those that are left behind because of the grief. And losing that loved one. So anything less than that, why do we fear it? Oh, Corona and COVID-19. Coming as close to, quote, event and death as I did. Still with it. And again, there's a lot of garbage going on there with it. They're doing more testing. So obviously the numbers are going to go up. Mm -hmm. But the death numbers are going down. Actual hospitalizations. Again, we need to research it, people. The actual numbers of hospitalizations and deaths aren't going through the roof like the positive numbers are. So there's a lot of other garbage behind all of this. Right. Well, regardless of that, regardless of what I went through with it, I'm not going to get in fear. I don't go out here in public in fear. We're not gathering together here in fear. Amen. Why? Because the word of the Lord says, don't be afraid, only believe. I happen to believe Psalm 93. I happen to believe that he is restoring and has restored health to some. And actually, Jeremiah 37, 17 says, I'm restoring health to you and healing you of all your wounds. Yeah. See, that's the thing, and it's demonic. With that COVID-19, some that even you know, get out of the hospital and all that, it can take months to get over some of the other effects, negative effects of that. Amen. And I know some here, and you know, that may be some of what I'm still going through. But I believe that he's restoring health to me and healing me of every wound. Amen. 
So even those that have been hit with COVID-19 and are recovering, stand on that word. Amen. But despite the fact that it's still out there, numbers are increasing and all that, I'm not going to get in fear. I'm not going to live my life in fear over it. Right. I'm going to live in faith. Amen. So last week I preached the part one of it is how do we not be afraid and only believe? Or how can we live in this world without fear? Just for a recap for part of it is you need to know that God is with you and God is for you. I said God is with you and God is for you. Amen. It doesn't matter who's against you, what's against you. If God is for you, he's always going to lead you into triumph. He's always going to lead you into victory. His word says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The son of us went through the valley of the shadow of death. Guess what? We weren't alone. That's right. Despite doctors, nurses, and all that, he was with us and is with us and is for us. Yes. And you can see even out in the world, because Jesus even said that, men, and I shared this scripture last week, that men's heart will fail them because of fear. Yes. Well, I don't want any of you we're affiliated with heart to fail them because of fear. Yes. If we continue to focus on the bad news, all the garbage that's going on out there, real easy. If that's all you feed your spirit and your emotion is the bad news, the negative, death, destruction, loss, and all that, you're going to get in fear and you're going to live in fear. Yes. I've seen some people jokingly, but there's part of truth that it put on Facebook. You want to get rid of COVID, turn it off the TV. I know. <laughs> I know that in and of itself, but it's like the media feeds on it. They feed on the hype. They feed on the negative. They feed on the fear. Amen. And if that's all you're watching all day, yeah. that's all you're putting into your spirit. Why well, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You're going to get in fear. Well, again, we need to know that God is with us and God is for us. I'll just give you again a few of the scriptures from last week. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is the one that goes with you. Hallelujah. Amen. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Psalm 118.6 says, the Lord is on my side. Hallelujah. Amen. I will not fear what can man do to me. Come on. Right. Isaiah 41.10, one of my favorites. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Later on, he tells Daniel not to fear. In Romans 8, 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who or what can be against us? Again, you want to live a life without fear? And being able to continue to stand and believe God, you need to know that God is with you and God is for you. Amen. Amen. That no matter what comes against you, he's for you. Amen. No matter the diagnosis, no matter the sickness, the disease, the symptoms, God is for us, right. not against us. And we need to stand on that and stay focused on that. Amen. There are several others I shared, but that was last week's. To know that God is with you and God is for you. Don't be afraid, just believe. Concerning just believe, part two, is just believe in his word. I said just believe in his word. Amen. And along with that, believe in the God of the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh, dwelt among us. Psalm 56, 4. You can turn there. Psalm 56, Actually, verse 3. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. Amen. What can sickness do to me? What can disease do to me? What can people's blah, 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 gossip and slander do to you? So in God, I'll praise his word. In God, I put my trust. And then he says, I will not fear. See, in part, 
kind of a side one here. You need to declare that out of your mouth. I will not fear. I will not be afraid. Amen. Fear has no place in me. I'm sharing the scripture. Well, he's going to share it later on. But God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, joy, and of a sound mind. So if fear is attacking you, it's not coming from God. It's not of God or coming from God. So we need to reject that. Several years ago, I'd seen it and I posted on Facebook, when fear comes knocking at the door, let faith answer. Yes. And fear's going to go. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'll repeat that again because that's worth that's tweeting or Instagramming or whatever. When fear comes knocking at the door, let faith answer. Amen. And fear is going to take off running. Glory to God. Amen. So we need to believe in God. Believe in the word of God. We need to know, according to Jeremiah 1.12, it says, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. He's ready to perform his word. Another translation said he's watching over his word to perform it. Right, yes. So what's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of your mouth needs to be the word of God. Amen. I thank you. And again, I did this when I was in the hospital. Multiple times. I thank you that you are the God that heals me. I thank you that you forgive me of all my sins and heal me of all my diseases. I thank you that you took stripes upon your back for my healing. You are restoring health to me and healing me of every wound. Pray that over every other individual that I knew was fighting this or any other sickness or disease. We need to come out with the word of God. God watches over his word to perform it. I know in Job it says to decree and declare a thing and it will be established. Well, what we need to decree and declare is his word. Because he watches over his word to perform it. I can't just declare and decree any old thing and think God's obligated to abide by it. That's right. No, he abides by his word. He watches over his word to perform it. Amen. So you want to live a life where you're not afraid and you just believe? Again, get full of the word of God. Trust the word of God. Say what God's word says. Amen. Know that he is, again, watching over his word to perform it. Yes. Yes, Lord. Isaiah 55, 11. Says, so, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. His word's already been spoken, his word's already been written. We need to get in alignment with it, we need to get in agreement with it. Again, every healing scripture you can find when you're needing a healing to manifest in your body. Again, I love 1 Peter 2 24, by whose stripes you have already, quote, been healed. It's like our body needs to line up with it. In the first few weeks when I got out of the hospital and was you know, still on oxygen and some of that, I declared that and I said, well, the body's just catching up. That's it. We're, quote, already healed. It's just sometimes our body's playing catch up. But you've got to get in agreement and stay in agreement with the word of God. And know that he sent forth his word. And it's going to accomplish what he sent it forth to do. Well, you need to keep feeding your spirit, man, the word of God. Not, oh, I'm sick, oh, I'm sick, oh, no. Feed your spirit, man, the word of God. Amen. Amen. Concerning believing, turn with me to Matthew 8. I might preach myself happy today. <laughs> no, I will and am, glory. Amen. That song I'll jump around in my head. I'm happy. Da, 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 da. Some song out there. Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew 8, 1 uh, verse 5. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Amen. When are we going to have that kind of faith? Amen. I'm all about, I'm all for it, nothing wrong with that. Anointing with oil, laying hands on the sick. Even what we did, me this morning, we've done with others at other times. Yeah. But we need to have the kind of faith that the word can just be spoken. Yes. Maybe you're on the phone with somebody and you're just speaking the word and praying for them and they receive it or you receive it. That's the kind of faith I want. Amen. He said, only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority having soldiers under me. 
I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Jesus continually, all through the Gospels, read it, targeted people's faith. Little faith, no faith, great faith. There's only two times he marveled. He either marveled at great faith or he marveled at their unbelief. I want him marveling at our great faith. And that's the kind of faith it takes that we just take God at his word. We're not afraid, regardless of what we hear, but we believe what God says. Again, God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, is he not? He saved us. If you're born again this morning, you're saved. Heaven bound, going to spend eternity with him. How can we fear anything? Okay, where was I at? What verse did I leave off at? 8, 5, Matthew 10. 10. Yeah, when Jesus heard it, he marveled. He said, I have not found out such great faith even in Israel. He says, I say to you that many will come from east and west, sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. So they'll be weeping, gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And a servant was healed that same hour. If it's not already underlined, highlight that in your Bible. As you have believed, so let it be done for you. To a great degree, that's what you're going to receive in your life. Yes. As you believe. If you believe that God's going to heal you this way or that way or whatever, continue to contend for that and stand for that. And again, I'm not obviously against medical science, doctors, none of that. Go and see them, get tested and all that. But my faith in a great physician. Amen. And I believe that he'll give them the wisdom, the direction to do what they need to do. But I'm continuing to stand and believe God for his healing touch. For the miracle working power of God to flow through my body. Even in battling all this, I told the Lord a few times. You didn't deliver me and heal me from COVID-19 and near death with that to let some other stupid thing take me out. Amen. Now it's a battle. And as she said, the last few weeks have been more because I'm tired of being tired. You know, tired of sick and tired, tired of feeling the way that I have, even though he delivered me from all that, still struggling to breathe at times and run out of breath easy and dragging and all that. And I'm fed up with it. Yes. But I know that it's according to my faith, to a great degree, is it going to be done for me? Amen. So I'm continuing to believe God's word and stand on God's word. Amen. And I did rejoice when I woke up and heard that. Don't be afraid, only believe. Right. That's right. Because I knew, okay, something's coming. And there's a reason he's telling me that. Amen. Hello? When he gives you a word, get excited about it. Yeah. Again, when the Satan, the same way, when Satan speaks to you, you get excited because he's a liar. There's no truth in him. Right. He can think he can try to take me out by a stroke or something else. Well, he's a liar and he's a loser. Because no weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. No plague, sickness, disease come near my dwelling. Well, it already has. Well, that's all right. He's a trespasser. He's got no right to stay. No right to exist. I command it to go in Jesus' name. Right. And the same for each and every one of you and those that are watching by face on Facebook. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. But that's powerful. He said, as you have believed, it will be done for you. Mm -hmm. right. So where's your faith at? Are you believing God? Are you trusting God? Are you standing on God's word regardless of what you see, regardless of what you hear, regardless of how you feel? Don't be afraid. Only believe. Matthew 21, 22 says, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. What are you asking God for in prayer? Well, do you believe that he's doing it and that he's done it, able to do it? You know, we quote Ephesians 3, 20, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power or his power that works in us. But do we really believe that? But if you believe, you'll receive whatever you ask for in prayer. We need to believe, church. We say we're believers. Well, I've seen it too many times over the years. There's too many unbelieving believers in the body of Christ in the church. Oh, they believe in Jesus as Savior, but they truly don't believe he's healer, deliverer, provider. 
Prince of Peace, Joy Giver, our Rock, our Refuge, our Fortress, our Strength. Yes, salvation is numero uno, number one, primary thing. But he is so much more than that. That's right. Amen. And you can't separate anything else that he is from himself. As I've said before, when he walks, quote, through these doors, he doesn't come in just a savior and leave healer or deliverer outside the door. He just doesn't come in here as prince of peace but leaves joy outside the door. You can't separate any part of God's character from who God is. Amen. He's all in all. He is, again, our rock, our refuge, our fortress, our strength, our savior, our healer, our deliverer, our provider, our prince of peace, our joy giver. That's who he is. Hallelujah. Amen. And we need to rejoice in that. Yes. And believe that when we pray, he hears and that he responds. Amen. Well, I prayed and the answer hadn't come. Daniel prayed. I shared some of that verse last week. Daniel prayed. And there was warfare in the heavens. Because the angel appeared and said, I heard you the moment you prayed. Yes. But again, there's warfare going on. Well, our job is to pray and to believe. We wrestle not against flesh and blood and all that other mess. Mm -hmm. So you pray and you believe God. Amen. Turn with me uh, to Mark chapter 9. Some awesome verses here, stories. How's faith come, church? Hearing, hearing. hearing the word of God, amen. We are hearing it today. So you need to believe, regardless of what you may be going through, faith's coming. Yes, he's given all of you a measure of faith, but as you continue to hear God's word, apply it to your life, your faith grows and increases. So Mark chapter 9, verse 17. It says, Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. You'd lose three-fourths of the Christians right there if the pastor spoke to you that way. How long do I got to bear with you and put up with you? <laughs> But Jesus was toughing them up. So all you snowflakes out there today, get tough. <laughs> then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. He fell to the ground, wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this happening to, been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. Often he has thrown him both into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, and I love how he turned this one around. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, verse 24, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf, dumb spirit, I command you to come out of him and enter him no more. The spirit cried out. Convulsed him greatly, came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted up, lifted him up, and he arose. It isn't about if Jesus can. It isn't about if Jesus is willing. He said, I'm willing. We don't need to pray, God, if it's your will, heal so and so. No, he is willing. It is his will. And his response was, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. He put it on us. So if you're not to be afraid and only believe, you need to get to that point to know that if you can believe, if I can believe, all things are possible to me. So regardless of the situation, all things are possible. Again, all those that, again, affiliated with us and that we went through with the virus and all that, every one of them, and all praise, honor, and glory goes to God, not to any of us. Not one perished. I said, not one perish. Now, don't think we just sat back and, oh, Jesus, what are you going to do? No, we went to Warren. I said, we went to Warren. Not Warren, Ohio. Warren. God, you said. Da, 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 da. We prayed for each and every one of them. So even, and again, I'm not going to say it now, but 
the Facebook message I got earlier with that couple and some of those that they're affiliated with getting the virus. We've done already prayed. We're believing God and standing with you for your healing and miracle to manifest. And it will in Jesus' name. And for any others fighting this. So again, it isn't about if God can or if God will. It's can you believe? Because if you'll believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And when you get that settled in your heart, get that settled in your spirit, there's no room for fear. That's right. Amen. Heard the definition. You all probably heard it. The acronym fear. False evidence appearing real. Yes. Say that again. False evidence appearing real. Yes. And again, the enemy has no new tricks. He's doing what he's always done. Did God really say? And then he speaks lies to you. Well, you need to know, again, God's word. Because you need to be responding back with, yes, God did say, by his stripes I was already healed. Yes, God did say, he'd supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Yes, God did say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The scriptures that I've already quoted in this. Yes, God did say, I'm watching over my word to perform it. God did say, he's for me and not against me. So who do you think you are, old dumb devil? Might get a cramp on my leg, so. Oh, that was faith, wasn't it? Yeah, well. <laughs> work in progress. Preacher preaching to himself. There you go. Woo! hi -ya. Oh, still in Mark. Move down to verse 27. Greg's being a good boy. He's not laughing in my video today. Be ain't said nothing funny yet. He's just laughing quietly. He's say something inside you, right? Come on. <laughs> uh, Mark chapter 9. No, that ain't right. You read that part already. Like maybe it was Matthew. Hold on. Okay, it should be Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9, or Matt, verse 27. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. When he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said, Do you believe I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you, and their eyes were open. What did he say? According to your faith, let it be to you. Same as the, he told the other man, basically the same thing. So where's your faith at, church? Our faith needs to be in the miracle working power of God, the healing power of God. That God still does save, heal, set free, deliver. Amen? Amen? We need to believe when we anoint with oil, lay hands on the sick, they will recover. We need to believe God's word. Take God at his word. Doesn't matter what we see, how we feel, what we hear. Right. It's what's God say about it. And our faith isn't to be built, because I've seen this too over the years. People will begin, they'll start out in faith, taking God at his word, believing the full gospel. But then because their experiences don't line up, they start twisting their experiences. Well, not every time, or maybe God will. I don't know. And then they start to, if it's your will, kind of. How can you pray a prayer of faith if you don't know if it's God's will? Bam. James, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Yeah. It talks about the prayer of faith. How can I pray a prayer of faith for healing or whatever over somebody if I don't know if it's God's will? Or other areas of your life. You need to know the scriptures. And again, when you get it, because scriptures aren't going to tell you what job to take and all that. It'll rule some out. If it's immoral and godly, they're wanting you to lie, cheat, steal, and all that. But for the most part, God's word isn't going to tell you what church to go to. Don't go to a dead one, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> or what job to take. That's where you need to be spirit-filled, spirit-led. Led by the spirit. Hear from the Holy Spirit. And do what he tells you to do. Regardless of what you see. Okay, Mark 16. Mark 16. 
winding down. I'm not, but the message is. Mark 16, verse 17, 15. He said to them, Jesus, this was Jesus after he was resurrected. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Oh, God loves everybody and everybody's going to heaven. Eh, eh, wrong. Verse 17, these signs will follow those who what? Believe. Again, we're not to chase signs or run after signs. Our job's to what? Believe. These signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. I'm still going to buy a fake one someday. Just mess with some of you. Bring it out of one of those boxes. It doesn't mean to test God by holding rattlesnakes and all that goofy stuff. It's talking about divine protection. Taking on the devil. I'll take up serpents. And again, Paul demonstrated an axe. He was bit by a poisonous viper. They expect him to keel over and die. What did he do? He shook it off. But they'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it'll by no means hurt them. Doesn't mean go get Drano and test God in it. It says they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Those are just some of the benefits if you'll believe. But you got, well, I don't believe that. Well, then it ain't going to happen for you. Those signs won't follow you. But if you believe God, they will. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, back up with me to Mark 11. Previously, this was when Jesus had cursed the fig tree and it was dried up and dead. And the disciples were amazed by it. Verse 22, Jesus answered, said to them, have faith in God. Yeah. Some people say you can translate out, have the faith of God. Faith in God, church, is simply getting in an agreement with God. It's believing what God has said. That's right. Amen. So it says, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. Amen. Notice it says doubt in his heart. Doubts can come to your mind. That's where you got to shut it down. Years ago, Kenneth Hagin said, you may not be able to stop a bird from stop dropping on your head, but you can sure keep it from building a nest. Thoughts come to you, but you can cast them down. Doubts can come to your mind, but you shut it down there. You don't let it get into your heart. Amen. But I say to you, whoever says this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. Do you believe that? Well, I don't know. Then people excuse it out. Blah, blah, blah. Again, especially if I'm saying what God's word says. I believe he watches over his word to form it. So I'm saying what God's word says. Therefore, that's what I'm speaking. That's what I'm saying. So I believe I received it. Amen. I believe I received all the healing that I need. Glory to God. Yes, may be still fighting symptoms, but I believe I've received my healing in Jesus' name. Amen. And I rejoice in it and I praise God in it. Amen. Goes on to say, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray. What's it say? When you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. Doesn't say believe after you receive it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. If I can see it, it doesn't take faith. It doesn't take faith for me to believe for any one of you that are here today that you're here today. You're here today. I can see it. Now, it takes faith for me to believe that the empty chairs will be filled in Jesus' name. And they will be. Amen. Yes. So whatever things you ask when you pray. So when you pray is when you believe that you've received them. Not after. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. That's not faith. I believe it after my healing minute. That's not faith. I believe it when I get that job or promote. That's not faith. Faith is I believe I've received now. Now faith is substance of things hoped for. Hebrews tells us. Amen. But then we do need to read verse 25 because none of the previous verses will work. It says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. If you have ought against others, offense against others, unforgiveness against others, and you think you're going to pray and God's going to move on your behalf, you're deceived. Your pipes are polluted, if you will. Your pipes are clogged, if you will. So we need to forgive if we expect God to move on our behalf. 
Good preaching. Thank you. Now I can go on and on with other scriptures concerning faith and believing. But you need to know again as a child of God, we're not to fear, but we're to believe God. We're to trust God. I quoted this one earlier, but this is where it's from. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Again, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So if fear is attacking you, it's not from God. Now again, there's a healthy fear of God. Yeah. And I shared the verse last week, we're not to fear those who can destroy our bodies, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul. Yes, we're to have that healthy fear of God. There is, quote, a healthy fear. Amen. You go jumping out of an airplane, that's foolish. Yeah. You better be afraid that you're going to... <laughs> but God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Love, and in most of y'all's cases, a sound mind. No, in all your cases, a sound mind. <laughs> You're pointing one at me, got four back at you. Amen. Hallelujah. I have a sound mind. Glory to God. First John four eighteen. You can write this one down or turn there, whichever. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. Any of you that fought fear, you were in torment. Were you not? You're in torment. And when I was in the hospital, I was fighting off some fear. And it wasn't the fear of death per se, because I knew I'd be with God, but it was the fear that I'd never see my family again. And I had to fight that off. I said, I had to fight that off. Yes. But there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. If you're tormented, there's fear involved there. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. There's no fear in love. God is love. This is one of the ways we stay out of fear. We get rid of fear. Know that God loves you. I said know that God loves you. No one will ever love you as much as God loves you. He's the one that sent his one and only son to die on that cross for you, to shed his blood for you. Right. He's the one that while you were yet in sin, Christ died for you. And as far as the east is from the west, have your sins been forgiven. Amen. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Romans, it tells us that the Holy Spirit has shed, has poured God's love abroad in our heart. When you truly get a hold of that and know how much God loves you, There'll be no fear. Come on. God loves me too much to let the coronavirus take me out Amen. at the young age that I am. Glory to God. Yeah. Been 40 for 19 more years. <laughs> you need to know how much God loves well, What about those that did die? I didn't love them. I didn't say that at all. The secret things belong to the Lord. And again, I'm not making light of anyone. It grieves my heart every time I see on the news or read. And I go to a lot of Christian news sites, and there's still pastors getting hit by it, church staff and all that. I pray for them. I intercede for them. Yes. Grieve for those that I've read that have lost those in ministry and all that. But it makes me love God even more. Amen. I said it makes me love God even more for sparing my life. Amen. Because I know it's out of his mercy, and it's out of his grace. And he obviously wasn't done with me regardless of what the devil said. That's right. He probably said, I got too much work still to do in you, son, to let you come up here yet. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. I knew that was coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why? Because I, and so are you, are his workmanship right. yeah. created for good works in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And the good work that he began in each and every one of us, he will bring to completion. That's right. As I preached the first Sunday, I was back. It ain't over. Till God says it's over. God always has the last Amen. word, the final say so. Hallelujah. Yes. But there's no fear in love. When you truly get a hold of how much God loves you, regardless of what comes against you, God's got my back. He's got my front. His mercies are new every morning. His favor surrounds me like a shield. Keep quoting Psalm 91. Keep declaring, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens and empowers me. And you need to get a hold of his love. That could have been a whole separate message right there. May get into that later on. But you need to truly get a hold of the love of God and realize how much he loves you. 
Because there's no fear in love. That's right. And if you're tormented, you're missing it. I said if you're tormented, you're missing it. That's right. Because there's fear there. Amen. Last verses of scripture. And then I will close. And I'm not a liar. I will. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, fifth closing. That's why I just say I'm winding down. But this will be my last scripture. Unless something comes out of my spirit. That's my loophole. Now, Psalm 27, verse 1. Psalm 27, go ahead and turn there because I'm going to read six verses. Psalm 27. Again, talking about don't be afraid, only believe. Believe in what? Believe in his word. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Is he? Doesn't matter how much darkness is around you. He's your light. Light always penetrates darkness. And my salvation. And again, salvation is more than just the forgiveness of your sins, saving of your soul. It's spirit, soul, body. Total, complete healing. So the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. I said the Lord is the strength of my life. I'm still decreeing that. Lord, I thank you that you are the strength of my life. And I just speak strength upon strength upon strength to my body in Jesus' name. Yes. The Lord is the strength of my life. And it says it again, of whom shall I be afraid? If he's your light and your salvation, why are you afraid? If he's the strength of your life, why are you afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. Again, what's he focusing on? The Lord, the Lord's presence. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Hallelujah. Woo! I added the hallelujah for emphasis, by the way. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy. In his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. We don't need to fear church. Our faith, our confidence, our trust, our belief needs to be knowing that God is with us. And that God is for us. Our faith, our trust, our belief needs to be in God's word. Stand on the promises of God's word. Again, don't be moved by what we hear, see, or how we feel. Just be moved by what we believe. Well, what do you believe? I believe God's word. I believe his report. Amen. I believe the promises in his word. Amen. Yes, yes. And if you'll do that, regardless of what comes against you, fear's got to go. I didn't say fear won't stop coming against you. Amen. The enemy will try the whole rest of your life to get you in doubt, to get you in unbelief, to try to get you in fear. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So church, it's time that we as the body of Christ Walk in true faith, confidence, and trust in the Lord. Don't get caught up in all the garbage of the world, getting in fear with all the chaos and all that. Senator, I don't want anybody's heart failing them because of fear. That's right. I want us walking into and experiencing everything God has of us, has for us, because of our faith in Him. That's right. And you'll never hear me say, well, if you just had enough faith, you wouldn't be going through anything. No, your faith is what's going to get you through it. That's I said your faith is what's going to get you through it. Faith won't stop things from coming against you. But your faith will stop you from caving into it. And giving into it. And wanting to quit and all that. So church, we need to rise up as men and women of faith. Don't be afraid. Only believe. And if we'll do that, we'll experience and receive everything that God has for us. And he does have victory in store for us. His word tells me he always, not sometimes, Always leads us in triumph. Our job is to follow him and to triumph in victory. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Stand to your feet. I'll close this out in prayer. Goodbye. Facebook.